Hey guys, Britt here. Welcome to End Times Bible Prophecy. Make sure to hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons. Well, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I believe one of the major events that we're going to see in 2023 and beyond is a global financial crisis and a global depression. I believe we're going to see the greatest financial crisis in world history, worse than the Great Depression, not exactly the same as exactly what happened during the Great Depression, but there will be a lot of chaos. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I believe that ground zero for this economic chaos is going to be Europe. Why is that? Well, one simple reason, energy. Energy is the lifeblood of economic activity. It drives all economic activity. And we've seen Nord Stream pipeline blown up. We've seen decisions like this one right here made by Germany. This says German nuclear power. Eon hikes energy prices 45% as Germany winds down its last nuclear power plants. It says Germany began shutting down its three remaining nuclear power reactors on Saturday as part of a long planned shift to renewable energy. So they delayed this last year due to the war in Ukraine and the energy short shortfall from the pipeline receiving less natural gas. But guys, this is as idiotic <laughs> as it can possibly be. When you are energy starved, as Europe is right now, here you have a source of abundant energy, cheap and abundant energy, and you're shutting it down intentionally. I mean, that's nothing short of madness in my opinion. And we read down, and of course, we see the natural result. It says, as energy prices rose last year as a result of the Ukraine conflict, certain members of German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's government became hesitant to close the nuclear power plants as planned on December 31st. Scholz agreed to a one-time extension of the deadline, but insisted on the final countdown taking place April 15th. Alongside the closure of the nuclear plants, German multinational electric utility E.ON increased its prices by as much as 45% starting June 1st. So, guys, we've already seen <laughs> crippling energy price rises on the European continent. They may not be at the all-time highs they were back in the fall, but they're significantly elevated from where they were three, four years ago. And this is going to shut down and deindustrialize Europe, and it's going to have ripple effects throughout the global economy. It's going to mess up the global supply chain. And I believe it's going to be part of what causes a global depression. And we see that it's not just Germany where we're seeing these troubles. This is from oilprice.com. It says, nuclear troubles send French winter power prices soaring. France's power prices for early 2024 are double the German prices for next winter, as the huge French nuclear fleet continues to show signs of weak output and availability. The French power price for the first quarter of 2024 was 416 euros per megawatt hour on Wednesday. That's more than double the price for the same period in Germany, where the power price was 169 euros per megawatt hour for early 2024. France has had troubles at many of its nuclear reactors, half of which have been shut down for repairs and maintenance several times over the past year. So what is the inevitable result of seeing stories like this, of seeing these energy shortfalls, of seeing energy prices elevated? Well, it's articles like this one. Why French bakeries in France are suddenly shutting down at alarming rates. 
It says France is considered the cultural home of bread baking. In fact, French bakeries are such a quintessential part of the nation's history that French President Emmanuel Macron ensured the baguette was given UNESCO heritage status in 2022. Unfortunately, skyrocketing costs are shuttering small businesses like bakeries across France. And we've gone over this in the past months ago. We talked about all the restaurants, all the taverns, all the different small businesses that were shutting down across Europe in the last summer, last fall. It says French bakeries are the lifeblood of many cities, towns, and villages, providing daily sustenance to people at every point of the socioeconomic spectrum. Therefore, the loss of a beloved bakery has a strong impact when it happens. But the cost of energy and raw ingredients are doubling and tripling so fast that many bakers simply call it quits. CNN interviewed a bakery owner and part-time firefighter in the small town of Millery, France. She's worried she can't keep up with the electric bill any longer. It multiplied nearly tenfold between December and January. When she renewed her contract for the new year, her electric bill shot up from 900 euros to 7,500 euros in January. A government subsidy would lower the bill by 3,000 euros per month. Even so, she says it's an unmanageable increase. It isn't just the electric bill that's skyrocketing at many French bakeries. She told CNN that the cost of raw materials and gasoline are becoming unbearable. She's also had to increase wages for her six employees and is on the brink of closure. So guys, this is a story again that we've heard over and over again. We're continuing to see it while... The energy crisis in Europe has dropped from the headlines because it doesn't meet the narrative that they want us all to hear. It is still there. I mean, if you're in Europe watching, leave your comments below. What are your energy bills now versus a year ago, two years ago? Are you having problems with this? Are you Do you run a business? Let us know. Leave your comments below and let us know what's going on. But back in the fall, we went over this article right here keep coming back to this because this to me is astounding and it really shows in a nutshell exactly what's happening it says four german companies all 125 plus years old declared insolvent in 24 hours so this is from back in october we had four german companies go bankrupt in one day all four of these companies they were in totally different lines of business and they were all at least 125 years old. Think about what they have endured <laughs> over the course of that 125 years. We have World War I, followed by Weimar Germany hyperinflation, followed by the Great Depression, the rise of the Nazis, <laughs> World War II, the total destruction of Germany and the European continent, you know, the 1970s stagflation, all of these things, these companies survived all of that with no problem. <laughs> but last, last autumn, they went out of business. Why? Because of these skyrocketing energy prices. And this is spilling over into everything. It's shutting down uh, fertilizer plants because they can't compete on the world market. And that capacity can't simply be made up somewhere else in the world where the energy prices are lower because you have to build out that capacity and that takes time. We're seeing aluminum manufacturers shut down. We're seeing a lot of these metals producers either shut down, curtail their supply. And even if they continue at the same production rates they had in the past, their costs are going to be elevated due to those energy costs. And they're going to pass that along to their customers, which leads to higher inflation. That's exactly what we're seeing. We see in this article from The Sun. It says, pain in pocket hunt tries to ease panic as inflation is highest in Western Europe and food prices rise at fastest rate in 45 years. Jeremy Hunt today insisted Britain's economy is on the right track despite inflation still sitting at double figures. New stats show inflation dropped slightly, 
Oh, it's only 10.1% March versus 10.4% in February. So, wow, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. It says, but food prices sat, soared by an eye-watering 19.1%. Guys, it's easy to see where all of this leads. It leads to things like this. So this is what we saw in France a couple of weeks ago. We're seeing massive protests in France. They don't like to talk about that in the media again because it doesn't fit their narrative. But people are angry. They're taking to the streets. We see in the Netherlands, farmers still taking to the streets, pushing back against the assault on their livelihood and on their freedom. We're seeing this take place all across Europe. This is the inevitable result of what we see happening. And guys, it's going to get worse because, again, we are on the cusp of the worst economic crisis, I believe, in history. We have all of the world's currencies right now are fiat currencies. That means they are backed by nothing. They have no value except the value that people ascribe to them by faith because the government has the government has put its fiat stamp on those pieces of paper and those zero and one digits in a computer saying, oh, this has value. But we've seen they've destroyed that value over time. We have a, over a quadrillion derivatives in the global financial system. Warren Buffett calls those weapons of financial mass destruction. These could take down the whole banking system all over the world. We're seeing the banking system. While that's dropped from the headlines, the runs on banks, the problems with the banking system, it has not gone away. The problems have not gone away. And of course, we have these energy concerns. These are not going away either. Nord Stream Pipeline isn't coming back, which means elevated energy prices for Europe and it means we're going to see more of these business closures. We're going to see people struggling to make ends meet. Even if the government subsidizes these energy bills for consumers, for businesses, all that does is drive government debt even higher. And if you look at all of history, we've never seen government debt at the levels we see today. Look at the, the debt carried by Japan, by the United States by the European nations. We've already had, we had a debt crisis about 12 years ago in the European Union, and they papered over that using the European Central Bank buying up all these bonds. And one of the reasons they could do that was because Germany, the German economy was humming along based on the cheap energy they were receiving from Russia. Well, that is gone now. And the German economy is suffering as a result, and all of Europe will as well. So what does all this have to do with Bible prophecy? I believe we could be witnessing the conditions that will set the stage for the rise of the Antichrist, because we see so many events already setting the stage for the events of the tribulation, be making them able to play out in a way that we've never seen before. We see many of the signs Jesus and the prophets pointed to that would occur before his return. So we're seeing the world stage set for these end times events to play out. And so it would make sense that the rise of the Antichrist is not far away. Now, this is just speculation on my part. I don't know if this, this particular crisis will be what leads to the rise of the Antichrist. And I don't plan to be here to find out because I believe that the identity of the Antichrist will be revealed after the rapture of the church. I plan to participate in that. I hope you do too. I hope that you know Jesus Christ and that you know that while you were a sinner, he died for you on the cross. He spilled his blood so that you could receive forgiveness and be reconciled with God and have eternal life and live in heaven. And then you'll be a part of the rapture and you won't be here for that. But I believe that we are seeing stage setting for the rise of the Antichrist, which could happen very quickly. To visualize just or help you understand just how quickly, I want to turn and look at an excerpt from this book I wrote. It's called The End Times. 
a God to Bible prophecy in the last days. And in chapter 6, I have this paragraph right here, and I want you to think about this paragraph and what it means. It says, how does the Antichrist come to power? In 1789, Napoleon was an artillery officer in the French army. In 1807, he ruled most of Europe. So think about that. 18 years. So one day he's this unknown artillery officer. Nobody knows who he is. 18 years later, he's ruling over Europe and nations or <laughs> nearby nations are wondering, is he coming for us next? It says in 1909, Adolf Hitler was a vagabond painting watercolors in Vienna. In 1933, he was dictator of Germany. So 24 years later, so he was basically almost on the cusp of homelessness, wandering aimlessly. And then 24 years later, he's undisputed ruler of Germany. Seven years later, he ruled almost all of continental Europe. Napoleon, Hitler, and countless others from the pages of history rose from obscurity to positions of immense power. The Antichrist will do the same. He'll be a military leader and a world conqueror, but he'll initially come to power through politics. And I want you to think about the backdrop of Napoleon's rise to power. What did we have? Well, we had economic chaos in France where people couldn't, couldn't find food to eat or they couldn't afford the food. And there was a massive revolution in the streets. And a lot of things happened. A lot of chaos ensued. But eventually, people looked to a strong man, and that strong man was Napoleon. The same thing in Germany. We had the Weimar hyperinflation following World War I. And there was a lot of chaos. And people were looking for a strong man. And Hitler tried to rise to power then. He failed. But then the Great Depression came along. And people looked back for that strong leader again. And he was able to grab the reins of power. And I believe we're going to see something similar happen here and now with what's going on in Europe, what's going on globally, because again, this is a global economic issue, but I believe ground zero is Europe precisely because of its energy problems. Europe cannot supply its own energy to the levels it needs to compete on the world stage the way it has in the past. You know, just a few years ago, collectively, the UK, the EU nations, were the largest economy in the world. Well, <laughs> who knows that they'll even rank in the top 100 if they keep shutting down their access to energy the way we see happening right now. What's going to happen? And what, what are when people see that quickly their standard of living erode, they're going to make demands. And I know the people who are in power now, they aren't listening they're moving forward with their plans. They have their green energy plans and their World Economic Forum plans, and they're moving forward, ignoring the protests of the people. But at some point, they'll no longer be able to ignore those people. And will that give rise to a strong man? And will that strong man be the Antichrist? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I certainly don't know. But I can observe what's going on in the world. And we know the season we live in right now we could, because we can see all the signs that Jesus and the prophets said to look for. We see Israel back in the land. We see the Jewish people back in control of the city of Jerusalem. We see the gospel being preached all around the world. We see so many of the signs Jesus and the prophets said to look for taking place. We see the Gog of Magog alliance coming into being. We see Russia and Turkey and Iran on Israel's northern border with their militaries in Syria. So we see all of these things, and now we're seeing this chaos erupt in Europe. And I believe that it's setting the stage for the eventual climb to power of the Antichrist. So all that said... We need to be watching for this. We need to be alert to this.
But our focus should not be on the Antichrist. Our focus should be on Jesus Christ. And we need to be going out. We need to be recognizing the signs of these times. And we need to know that time is short. And therefore, we need to go out and preach the good news to anyone who will hear it. Guys, go out and tell people the good news of Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be reconciled with God and have eternal life and be in heaven with him forever. Guys, that's the good news. Everybody needs to hear that good news. So that's how we should be spending our time. We should be spending our time reading the word of God, standing for righteousness, preparing ourselves in every way possible, and eagerly awaiting the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever that may be, we are to stand for righteousness and we are to stand for God from now until that day that he determines he's going to take his church back home. So make sure you're doing that. Keep your chin up. Keep your eyes focused on him because Jesus is our hope and he is our savior. So guys, thanks for watching today. God willing, I will see you on Monday. If you want to learn more about the end times and Bible prophecy, make sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter and get your copy of my free ebook, Seven Signs of the End Times. Just follow the link in the description to get your free book. Also, make sure to check out all of my books. Just look up Brit Gillette on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks, Google Books, Kobo, or anywhere books are sold. Thanks for watching today, and until next time, Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith.